When I was in the fourth grade, my teacher, Mrs. Burkett, sent me to the office because she said I was a daydreamer. And I went to the principal and the principal had a talk with me about being a daydreamer and I needed to stick to my knitting and I needed to get my work done. Well, the reality is that I've always been a daydreamer and I had a lot of trouble in school because I was a daydreamer. Because I was always on to the next thing. I was always about ideas. And I love to dream about things that I'm passionate about, but I like to take action on them too. And one of the things I've been dreaming about is I have this passion for plein air. I have this passion for painting. It changes people's lives. It changed my life. I look at art differently today because I learned how to paint. When I'm walking down the street, I observe the way the color and the light hit the side of a building. I observe that, that warm afternoon glow. Uh, or the pinks in the skies in the morning, or the, the greens of the horizon. And it has completely enhanced my life. I also have a new appreciation for art uh, when I go to museums, when I go to galleries, when I see what people are doing. I just absolutely am passionate about their art, and I'm also passionate about my own. Even though my own maybe isn't all that accomplished technically, my skills aren't all that great, Having the ability to be a plein air painter has changed my life because now, you know, I've never been about golf and I've never really had a lot of hobbies. I did, I did photography, but something about that, getting that easel and going outdoors uh, and being able to set up and be with friends and be in the outdoors and be doing a painting and have a deer leap across the front of your scene or to have a, you know, a duck land or, or a spider crawl on your canvas. You know, so many different things have happened. And I am passionate about helping people find art and find plein air, whether they're a collector. Some people get that joy out of collecting. And one of my big joys is finding a way to show somebody how they can become an artist. I was at a convention, of all things, a radio convention, and somehow I got into a discussion with this woman about art. And she said, oh, I would love to be able to do that, but I don't have the skill. I've never had any training. I just, I could never do it. And I said, you can do it. I said, if you can learn to type, you can learn to, to become an artist. You may not have the gift that some artists have, but you won't know that until you learn the basics. And I said, I'll teach you the basics or I'll introduce you to someone to teach you the basics. And she said, oh, no, 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 I could never do it. Well, I persisted. And I've done this with her, and I've done this with dozens of other people. I've got a buddy uh, who is coming to work for my company who came out of the radio industry. And he was a CEO of a very big corporation. He didn't have a lot of time. And he and I talked one day at dinner, and I told him about painting. And he was kind of interested. I could see him light up but he had never done it. Now he's painting every day and his, his life is enriched. And painting to me is about in, enriching life. You're able to share your interpretation of the world with other people. So I, I think that uh, my dream is not only to help other people uh, find it, but also I wanna help people who are in our industry, who are in our community, to enrich their lives, to become better. I go around and I teach marketing courses and I try to help painters learn how to market because I've spent my life in marketing. So I talk to them about how to get galleries. I talk to galleries about how to sell more artwork. I'm interested in taking everybody to the next level. Well, one of my dreams is to create the plein air convention. Uh, and, and I wanted to do something where we got a very large number of plein air painters together. Now, in reality, this happens all the time. We have these plein air events. We have, you know, plein air this town or plein air that town. And they're wonderful events and they attract 30, 40, 50 painters. But the painters tell me the upside is that they're there to make a living. 
they're working hard, but they don't get much time with the other painters. They're, they're competing, they're out painting by themselves, they're doing separate uh, competitive things, they're in the shows, they're dealing with the collectors, it's very stressful, they're trying to sell work. And they said, we'd like to have an opportunity to really spend more time just being with other painters and learning from other painters. Last June, I invited a few painters up to New York to the Adirondacks where I spend my summers. I love the beautiful vistas, the mountains, the, the rich greens. It's just so compelling up there. It's my muse. I've spent every summer up there for the last 20 years. I spend all summer there. And I get out and I paint frequently. I go outdoors, I paint in the rain. I don't mind any of it. And I decided to have some painters come up because painters have been saying, you know, invite me up to your place sometime. And I thought, well, let's kind of experiment with the idea of getting more painters together. So I, inv I invited a bunch of painters and I ended up, one painter invited another and another, and we ended up with 88 painters who wanted to come to the Adirondacks this one week in June. And I took over a local college and we did dorms and uh, we set it up so that we could just paint. And my promise to the painters was, we're painting, we're spending time together, we're hanging out in the bar together, we're critiquing one another's paintings, we're learning from one another, there's no show, there's no sale, there's no pressure, this is just camaraderie. And this is just building our skills as painters. So we did the experiment. Every single person who was there told me that that week was a life-changing experience. I got an email just this morning from a painter in Canada several months later who said, you know, I can't stop thinking about how wonderful that experience was. He said, I grew as a painter. I learned about painting because several of us would be painting the same scene and I'd be able to see how 20 other people attacked it. Uh, he said, I made friends that have become lifelong friends. He said, it was just one of the best experiences of my life. And I wanted to experiment with that and see what would happen. And it was a magical week. And so I thought, how could I replicate this in a bigger way? So when we were there, Steve Doherty, our editor, and I sat down in the Adirondacks and I said, let's take this to the next level. Let's create like the ultimate plein air event. Let's create an event where we get all these big, important, prominent um, painters. Let's get some speakers. Let's bring them all together. And I said, unlike some of the other events where you can pay $2,500 to attend and you go to workshops with two or three different people and you may get locked out of a workshop because you, you sign up for it, but it's been oversubscribed. Let's do something where everybody has access to everything. So we created the Plain Air Convention and we sat around and we brainstormed and we said, what would be like the ultimate event? Well, the first thing we said is we have to have all the elements we had in the Adirondacks. We have to have the camaraderie, the friendships, the painting together, hanging out at night, the critiquing, the painting. We've got to have that. But we also have to have the top tier people. So we called the first one, we called Clyde Aspivig, one of the best, most important painters living today, one of the greatest landscape painters. And we asked Clyde to, to headline this event. Then we picked up the phone and we called Scott Christensen, again, one of the greatest painters, and asked him to headline the event. And he agreed. And then I started thinking about what would really be cool well, obviously we wanted to get a lot of painters. So we have a, a tremendous lineup of terrific painters. We have some marketing seminars. We have things about bettering, bettering your career. We also have a surprise that we can't announce yet that is going to be a very special event taking place on the last day. But that's predicated on our ability to get someone from a foreign country to come over here. And we're working on that right now but I think that's going to happen. But one of the other things we did is we, I, I thought, who does everybody love? Well, we all love John Singer Sargent. And John Singer Sargent, though he's known as a figurative painter, was a fabulous plein air painter. 
He did a lot of plein air studies. There are books out just on his plein air work. The world's foremost expert in John Singer Sargent happens to be his grand nephew. John Singer Sargent's sister was Richard Orman's grandmother. Richard Orman studied John Singer Sargent, wrote down the family stories, became the world's foremost expert in Sargent. He's written all the monologues on Sargent. He knows about Sargent. And we ask him to come in and talk about John Singer Sargent's plein air work and to talk about the inside stories from the family. We're flying him in from London. This is going to be a great event. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. So we'll have onstage demos. We'll have panels. We'll have marketing. And then we're all going out into the field. And we have a whole bunch of really top-tier painters. We have some of the most exciting, young, energetic painters. People like um, Alexi Steele, uh, Jeremy Lipking, Tony Pro, uh, Yerlich Geithner, who is uh, a very exciting young man who is winning all the awards across the country. I think he's under 30 and he's winning all these awards and he studied in Russia and he's from Germany. He is hot, hot, hot. He's coming in. And we're going to put these people on stage. We're going to put these people in the demo, uh, in, in demos, but we're also going to put them in the field. And we're going to have these big fields in the red rocks set up and they'll have flags and you can see all these different masters. And rather than being stuck with just one all day, you can watch Jeremy Lipking. You can then go and watch Ken Oster or Ned Mueller or Camille Preswadic or so many. I mean, I'm not mentioning all the names and I wish I could because they're all so wonderful. And this is going to be just an ultimate event. We're going to hang out together. We've asked the vendors to come in. Uh, they're going to come in and set up their stuff. So hopefully you'll be able to see all the different easels on display, see the different paint companies, the brushes, the, you know, the various things that you need, have it all there, have this tremendous plein air event. Now we're having about 750 people, we predict. That's the maximum a hotel can take. And this hotel is blow away gorgeous. It's modern, it's beautiful, it's called the Red Rock Resort. And it's not on the Strip in Las Vegas. It's out on the edge of Las Vegas, right next to the Red Rock National Conservation Area. We picked it because it has these beautiful scenes of glowing red rocks. When that morning or afternoon sun hits those rocks, beautiful vistas. And there's a lot to paint out there. There's animals, uh, there are places nearby that have buffaloes and peacocks and old buildings. It is absolutely terrific. And the reason we picked Vegas is because Vegas is cheap to fly to, cheap hotel rooms, cheap food. Uh, it's obviously pretty close to a lot of painters because there are a lot of painters in California and Utah and Arizona. So we're going to get a lot of people from there. And quite frankly, I think every one of those 750 seats will be sold because it's an exciting event. I've heard from a lot of people who are coming and we've already sold lots and lots of seats. So it's a terrific event and we think it's going to make history. It's going to make history because it's probably the largest gathering of artists in the history of art. And one day we're going to set up all of us. We did this in the Adirondacks. We're going to set up all the easels together and we're going to paint a scene together and we're going to get in the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest number of painters that have ever painted together. And can you imagine if we get 750 painters along with some of the great masters of our day painting together? This is going to be a tremendous event.